every mod has a light sensor on it. It actually doesn't stick out, but it's uh, visible through a hole. Yeah, so you can mistake the the mod range hole for the light sensor hole, and if you think it's iced up or something, you can jam it in there hard enough to break the light sensor. But every mod has a light sensor, but the entire display is running off of the light sensor on what we call the grandparent mod. So the grandparent mod is the one that has the com option. Everything is reading that light sensor. So it's, it's communicated throughout the whole display, that light sensor reading. So if you did have a problem, say, this was uh, this was your grandparent mod right here, and there's it's not reading light for some reason. You can swap that mod and reconfigure, and it'll use that new mod's light sensor. What what can happen is that the uh, assigned company, um, in order to install this and drill it, they pull all the mods out, and they put them back in in a different order. It's lost its config then. I'll just show you how you config. If it gets messed up in the field, or you end up swapping mods, or you put a new mod in, you need to remap it. And this is what you do. You go into the menu, arrow over to Config Displays. You press the Enter. You count up how many mods it has. And it puts a box around the mod and says, is this your display? And in this case it is, so I press Enter. And then it goes to the next mod and says, is this your entire display? In this case, it's not. I want it to go to the next configurable option. So I press the plus key, and it outlines four mods. Is this your display? Yes. Press enter, and it configures that as one display. And it does the same thing for the next one. And you can, you can continue to cycle back and forth. In this case, it will cycle through the valid configurations for this mod size. And I guess I didn't talk about that, but this, you can see this is a different pitch, different pixel pitch than these ones. So these mods aren't interchangeable. And uh, there's a number of different pixel pitch sizes. So it's, it's reading um, the pixel pitch of this mod, and it has a table of what are the valid configurations for this pixel pitch. And that's what it'll allow you to select. So if it gets screwed up, this is what you gotta go to. So you're probably going to get a call at some point where you get some levels like this. And yeah, to recover from that, you'll hold down the bottom buttons, go over to you, go to configure displays. Oops, I didn't hit enter. Editing prices when you're in multi-frame. So here there's a dedicated edit key, the lower right key. So you hold that edit key down, and the first price, it will set itself to the first frame, showing cash, and the first price. So you edit that one with the plus and minus keys. And when you're done, you use the arrow to go to the next price in that frame, so the next cash price. Hit the arrow, goes to the next cash price change that one, and then you hit the arrow again, and it knows those are the only two prices in that frame. And it automatically switches to the next frame, so now we're setting credit prices. And now we're setting debit prices. I didn't change anything there. And it just cycles through all of them right now. When you're finished, you hit the accept key, so you've done anything prices, and it goes back to normal operation. Does it ever time out on its own, or you got it? It does. Okay, good. And uh, the only difference when you're on, you don't have cash credit, is it doesn't ask you to set more than one price for each line. It's just single price. There is uh, a diagnostics menu here. Down here, arrow over. Last item in here is diagnostics. Check mark. Press enter on one of these. 
This is showing the hardware ID. So each pixel pitch and color has its own hardware ID. So it could be that some service guy has a green model <laughs> and it's a six inch. And he thinks he can throw it in this display as a replacement for this, but it's not the right pixel pitch. If you suspect that that's the case, you can come to this this diagnostics item and show the hardware ID of each one. And if they don't match, you know, they put something there that shouldn't be there. And once you're into the diagnostics menu, you can use the arrow keys to rotate between all the items. So right now we're in hardware ID, and if I press the right key, it goes to the software version and it shows on the grandparent mod momentarily what diagnostics item you're now viewing. So this is the software version, font version. The font is a separate file that gets loaded, and this will tell you what version of the font file you have. If you have a mismatch of font files, you'll get some funky looking rendering. So errors, we don't have anything defined here yet, but it's showing that there's no errors logged. Temperature, just logs the temperature that's being read by the onboard temp sensor. Displays, just puts a border around each set of mods that's defined as a display. So this would be another area where if they have garbage on their display, you could come here and show displays, and if you see something that doesn't make any sense, you know they have a configuration problem. Node address. So the node address is the position of a mod within a cabinet. And this is, we talked about how signal is routed. That was down the first column and then up the next. These things just address themselves linearly in that way. One, two, three, four. And next one is linear address. So this is, every mod gets also an address in the whole system. So you can tell how these things are wired this way also. Roll just shows grandparent is G, parent is B, C is child content. Just shows you what's programmed here. And since we're set up for multiple frames, you can use these plus and the minus to show what each frame is configured for also. Diagnostics item. So this is signal direction. And this shows you that signal is coming in on the left on port A and going out on port B. So if you suspect that they have something wired backwards, they can come in here. If it's wired from A, B to A, it'll show the arrow the other way. The very end is this calibrate function. And this is for if somebody, say somebody's had a display for three years and this mod gets hit by a hailstone and needs replaced, that new mod's gonna be a lot brighter than the others. And they're gonna to wanna to be able to dim that mod down to match the, match the remainder. So this is how they can do that. Enter and calibrate. See that? Yep. So it, you have to pick an individual mod that you want to calibrate. So let's just say that it's this guy right here is the new mod. I want to calibrate that one. Press enter, and it's putting this uh, pattern on there. And you use the plus and minus keys to adjust the intensity of that individual mod. So, so just visually, you have to match it up. You can see that it's not matched now. Get it back to where you, about where you think it ought to be, and press enter. And until it's done by backing out of the menu, and back to normal operation. Service items would be power supply replacement, and that is upper left mod. In these displays where there's only one power supply, it's always going to be behind the upper left mod. In a larger cabinet where there's multiples, you're going to have to look which column it might be. And if it has multiple power supplies, you'll see if one is, if you see a, uh, like a, a partial display of your price up there, it's gonna be either that the power supply is bad or one of these power supply connectors is come unplugged on the mod because the power is daisy chain three mods like they are on galaxies and other displays. So it could be a power supply, it could be a disconnected cable. And the replacement is uh, fairly simple. You undo the wire, take off this access panel Undo the wire nuts, two five sixteenths nuts here for a bracket that holds the power supply in. You have to remove those all the way and they're not slotted, or they're not uh, key slots. Take those nuts off, take the bracket off, and the power supply comes right out. Key fob re receiver replacement, you get a whole new kit. Remove what's in there and replace what's new. Um, some guys, I, we've seen on radio replacements, they'll take a guess at what's bad, and they'll do things like, leave the old antenna in there or leave the old receiver in there and just replace the antenna or things like that and make sure that they replace all of it. If you have to replace the key fob, 
you do have to repair it. And pairing requires that you cycle power to it. So if they get a new key fob, just have to flip the breaker, flip it back on, go outside, press the two, two pair keys. You shouldn't have to repair it if you replace the batteries. In fact, you should be able to, if they want to keep the same switch settings, all they have to do is, on their new key fob, set the switch settings the same as their old, okay. and then you won't have to repair either. Mod replacement, uh, that's pretty simple. Just pull the old mod out, disconnect your connectors. One thing to be aware of is that uh, these small mods, you're probably going to get people that don't hang there like that. And it doesn't really hurt these smaller ones, but on a bigger mod, an 8 inch or a 10 inch mod, you can start to this power supply connector starts to get tweaked pretty good. So it's recommended that you don't hang them by the cables. The cables, we talked about these latches right here. It's pretty easy to put these things in. There's a, there's a seal around the outside of that cable right there. And in order to get it completely latched, you have to push it hard enough to compress that seal so that that latch will get made. So it's a good idea to plug the thing in and then actually look at the latch to make sure that it's made. If you can pull on the cable and pull it right off, it's not made. Uh, you'll probably get requests that uh, my font isn't right. How do I change it? And we've already gone through that. So you'll go hold the top two keys to get into your menu, hit enter on the program, arrow over to font, hit enter, use your arrows to select the font. Maybe somebody doesn't like the full nine tenths and they want to change it over. So, do that again real quick. Hold the top two keys to get into the program. Got to hold it until it actually shows programmed. And hit enter. Now select the next cabinet. Hit enter. Arrow over. There you go. Oh, get format. And then arrow over until you get one that has just a small nine. Hit enter. And then you can X out. <laughs> so this, you'll see that um, this format change applies to all frames on that cabinet. But you can have your other cabinets, your other displays set to a different format. And we have had one instance that I know of where there was a display on the Canadian, or a gas station on the Canadian border that wanted to show US price and Canadian price. You couldn't do that with FL3000, but here you could. It's not in this build of the firmware, but we sold displays to Puerto Rico that have seven tenths, and that will be also another option. So you can show either a small seven or a full seven tenths. Change the cash credit messages. Hold down the Bob two keys, and hit enter on program, and yes, this is our cash credit, so let's enter there, and yep, we want to change the content, and frame one, let's say they want, we do want it to be a message, so hit enter, and let's say they want this one to say, you can use the arrow buttons to go over and select a different message here. Let's find another payment method. There's a single card. Let's say they want that to be framed. <coughs> so we can enter there. And then it's F2. Let's say they want this one to be credited. Just X out at this point. 